everyone. I'm Dr. Renee Mera, and today my guest is Vedya Menakshi Gupta. She is a very prominent ambassador of Ayurveda in the West. She has an Ayurveda Wellness Center in Plano, Texas called Ayur Roots. And uh, she's been uh, trained in Ayurveda, masters in Ayurveda uh, from the Ayurveda Institute in Jaipur, India. She's got over 23 years of clinical experience. Thank you so much, Vedya Minakshi Gupta, for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Renai, for inviting me uh, uh, on your show. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. And today we're going to be uh, talking to Vedya Minakshi Gupta on diabetes management. And according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention states, over 130 million people in the U.S. are diagnosed with diabetes and pre-diabetes conditions. So we're talking about a huge number here, almost 10.2% in the US with diabetes and prediabetes. And 23% of our healthcare spending in the United States goes for diabetes and diabetes related conditions. So we're talking about comorbidities, the damage that it can create with the nerves and the vision and the kidneys. So it's best to start with preventive care. And today we have the Menakshi Gupta is going to talk on diabetes management from the Ayurveda perspective. And that's all about holistic wellness. It's about uh, non-pharmaceutical approach. Statistics for diabetes around the world, in the US, even in India, just known as the diabetes capital in the world, is, is, is just you know mind blowing. So better to start at the very beginning, at the outset, the minute once somebody knows they, are, they either they have a pre-genetic disposition to diabetes, or the A1C level is high, that is a warning signal and you should start right at that point of time. So let's hear it from you. So uh, you are very, uh, very much right in saying that, uh, Dr. Renee, that globally, if we see that, especially the type two diabetes mellitus is considered one of the most common disease. Uh, statistically, if we see that the numbers are keep on growing and predicted to be keep on growing, uh, towards 245 million approximately by the time we are going to reach by 2030. So uh, worldwide, it has become really a big issue. And if we go back towards the history, diabetes mellitus, if we see that it was first recognized as a disease around 3,000 year old back. And uh, if we see in the Ayurveda viewpoint, Ayurveda is the science, holistic science, where uh, uh, it came from the ancient uh, scriptures of India, uh, rooted in a, uh, a Indian scriptures, 5,000 year old back. At that time also, the diabetes has been mentioned with the uh, pre-symptoms, symptoms, how to recognize diabetes and what is the line of treatment in, diabetes, uh, in Ayurveda for the diabetes. So diabetes is not a new word, mm -hmm. if we say that in Ayurveda. Yes, but the problem with the uh, in modern world, we say that it is a lifestyle related disease. So in modern world, if we see that our lifestyle, sedentary lifestyle habits, the eating habits, the cooking habits, everything goes towards the diabetes. How we can manage or prevent, it is going to be with the appropriate self-care in the form of diet, <clears throat> sleep, proper sleep also impact the diabetes, the exercise. And uh, by adapting the lifestyle, which is uh, which provides the better quality of life, that's how we can prevent and uh, overcome the complications of the diabetes. So we're talking about full, full lifestyle management, which includes um, you know dietary habits. It talks about proper sleep, herbal supplements, uh, increased physical activity, all these things. And we're talking about type two diabetes. You know, yeah. Yes. We are, we are uh, mainly focused on the type 2 diabetes. Yes. In Ayurveda, we say that there are three sub-pillars of life. And these three sub-pillars are Aha, Nidra, Brahmacharya. In other words, you can say the diet, sleep, control use of senses. These are the three sub-pillars. When we follow the uh, regimen around those, which is a wholesome, then we can create the health and the wellness in any form of the disease. So we can prevent even the diabetes by following the diet, which is good for the person, in spite of having the genetic trait for the diabetes. 
because we all know that uh, there are many people who have the family history of diabetes mm -hmm. but when we say that the family history there is another uh, um, concept of gene expression also where we can always change the gene expression by adapting certain diet the lifestyle doing certain breathing exercises because if you see that the diabetes is related to the stress also very much too much stressful life also can lead to the diabetes so when we uh, work upon on all those segments it is very easy to prevent and uh, very easy to manage the diabetes also a lot of people do mention like you talked about gene expression i want to pause over here and talk about that a little bit because a lot of people think oh uh, my family has diabetes i'm definitely going to get it you know that doesn't it doesn't mean it's your destiny if you control it manage it properly at the very outset you create a new pathway in your life it's so true. I mean, I have a very strong family history of diabetes. And uh, so far, I uh, because I follow the Ayurveda diet and techniques, breathing exercises, lifestyle also, exercise, yoga also, uh, all those are helping me so far in my life. Uh, I'm in mid 40s. So uh, no sign of even the pre diabetic. So it can, uh, we can always uh, follow the gene expression by following certain diet and all. Yeah, that is great. You're a living example of, you know, prevention um, is the key. So let's talk about, let's take first, uh, we know, increased physical activity. That is, of course, important and good sleep. But let's talk about good dietary habits, the foods that one should be taking. First of all, Ayurveda always says that look at your constitution. Based upon constitution, the diet should uh, be wholesome, depending upon what constitution you have. And also look at the build also, because there is a concept of fasting. These days, the intermittent fasting is also very uh, high on the rise. So in Ayurveda also, there is a concept of fasting. But we say that if the person needs to uh, lose weight and kickstart his metabolism, then it is good to start with the intermittent fasting. But if the person is already very lean and thin because of the diabetes, then it is not a good to go with the intermittent fasting first rather it should be focused on the wholesome diet for diabetes so when you talk about when you asked about the diabetes diet then there are certain tastes in ayurveda we say that there are six tastes so bitter and astringent uh, vegetables are considered to be best for the diabetes for example all the crucifera vegetables broccoli cabbage cauliflower brussels sprouts kale um, arugula, all are bitter and astringent. That can be helpful uh, with the diabetic uh, or the pre-diabetic situation. Then there are there is a turmeric also. Turmeric, a lot of people they know as a Indian spice or uh, as an antioxidant <clears throat> spice. Anti-inflammatory. <clears throat> Anti-inflammatory and antioxidant also. Uh, so, but the turmeric is also one of the best spices when we say we incorporate in a right way for the pre-diabetic or the diabetic situation. Then uh, there are various lentils which have the low glycemic in index. For example, all the beans, uh, especially related to the pigeon beans, the mung beans, the yellow lentils, as well as uh, horse gram, all these have the low glycemic index. So uh, that also helps in stabilizing the sugar level. Garlic also, you will be surprised to know, will be helpful in the um, proper metabolism and helps in uh, helps with the management of the diabetes. And then uh, there are another vegetables, Indian vegetables, which are good, like all the bitter vegetables. When I talk to, um, in my clinic, when I talk to the client regarding the bitter vegetables, everybody think about only the bitter gar. Mm -hmm. So here is the bitter guard, snake guard, all the guard varieties, ridge guard, um, the fenugreek, um, then the Indian gooseberry, uh, all those uh, are can be incorporated, moringa, drumsticks, leaves, these also considered as a bitter and can be helpful for the uh, proper management and proper care for the diabetes. So you can also soak the fenugreek seeds or the coriander seeds and have them in the morning. Um, how much should one soak those seeds for one person? So uh, coriander seeds water uh, always good for the uh, kidneys because it is a natural diuretic. 
So one can have either the standalone coriander seed tea, which can be made by one teaspoon of crushed coriander seeds, boil in one and a half cup of water and reduce the quantity to one cup. And then they can have the tea uh, one or two times by squeezing lime juice um, and uh, um, with or without food can be taken. Now the methi, the, which is the fenugreek seeds, fenugreek seeds also can be um, incorporated in the food, also can be incor incorporated as soak overnight in the morning, just mash the seeds along with the water. Drink so the how water. much? One teaspoon of fenugreek seeds? Yes, half to one teaspoon, depending upon if it is too um, uh, summerish, means if the temperature is above 90, or if the person is pitta prakriti already having the acidity issue or the heartburn issue then half teaspoon should be uh, okay and then uh, just you can chew the soaked seed just like that if you can or otherwise again you can make the tea out of that and can incorporate on daily basis like that so do you throw away the water or you uh, you no, have you water? drink the water seeds you can chew if it tastes too bitter yeah. then you can make the tea out of that then okay. rather than the soaking, I will make the powder and boil in the water and then I can uh, have a tea like that. So in that way, one can incorporate. Or you can actually uh, saute some of the fenugreek seeds in your food. Yes, you can do always. You can incorporate in the diet, uh, whatever the dry vegetables or if you are grilling some vegetables where you are adding the other spices, you can always add the fenugreek seeds also in that. Make sure the quantity is not too much because it is very, very bitter and can uh, make the entire uh, dish bitter. So just small amount, one put to half teaspoon for one serving should be fine. And maybe not in the summertime that much because the temperature is so hot. I mean, we're talking about like over 90 degrees. So if somebody's got a pitta or a fire constitution, that only exacerbates the problem. Yes, then uh, I would suggest to uh, recommend to go for the Coriander seeds. Coriander seeds, okay. Yes. The similar way, uh, Dr. Renee, barley also can be incorporated because barley is also naturally diuretic, helps with the kidneys. And the clinical research also have approved that the barley is very, very good when it comes to managing the diabetes. So in that way also, uh, barley can be added in the soups. Barley can, barley pulse can be cooked. Instead of rice, the barley pulse can be utilized. What about soaking the barley seeds and having the water in the morning? Yeah, the similar way we were doing the uh, the methi, the fenugreek seeds or the coriander seeds, barley seeds also can be soaked and can be, uh, the water can be, uh, one person can have the water uh, early morning, empty stomach, that also can be beneficial. So one teaspoon of barley seeds also, that should be good enough? one teaspoon of barley. Yeah. Now we also talked about amla gooseberry. So the amla juice, if you can squeeze the juice out of the amla, fresh amla, that also can be very, very beneficial. And you can if you get it over here. So uh, then the frozen amla is also frozen. available. One can incorporate in the diet. You can chop one amla and along with the food, you can have it. Or uh, another thing is the amla powder is easily available. We call it as Indian gooseberry. Uh, it is easily available. It can be incorporated standalone. It can be incorporated with the con uh, combination of trifla because trifla does contain the amla. Or it can be combined with the turmeric also, which is one of the best composition for the, uh, st for the stabilizing the sugar levels or for the management of diabetes. So... Uh, equal part of uh, turmeric as well as the amalki powder combined together and then that can be taken uh, depending upon the weight and the dosage can be uh, different half teaspoon one four teaspoon to half teaspoon one can take one or twice a day that also helps with the management of the diabetes okay just with water just with the plain water before the meals mm -hmm. uh, one can take this so half an hour before the meal yes Okay. Right. And uh, we talked about food, but let's talk about rice. A lot of people think, oh, somebody has diabetes, they can't take rice. But there are different varieties of rice also with low glycemic index. You know, there is uh, red rice, uh, there is brown rice. So let's hear from you about the 
how to take rice and how much rice diabetics should be taking? So when it comes to Ayurveda, we say that rice is okay to eat as long as those are not the new crop. So always for the diabetes, uh, one year old crop uh, grains are recommended. So the red rice as well as the wild rice and the brown rice can be taken if it is one year old. Also, along with that, I would like to point it out uh, that there are. How would you know over here? You know, when you're buying rice, it wouldn't say it's one year old or something. I mean, it's just the expiration date. So, are we going beyond that? I mean, how are we going to? No, uh, uh, this this is the <laughs> part where I I could never figure it out. I tried to look for the manufacturing date, which yes. sometimes some places you can find, and that will give you an idea. But more majority of the time on the bags, we can't find the manufacturing date. Only the expiration date is there. So it is very hard to uh, go with that, uh, uh, that it is it should be one year old. So on the safer side, we can say that keep the rice as a uh, not a main integral part of your daily diet, maybe once or twice, rely on the other food particles which are uh, low in glycemic index, like oats are low in glycemic index, wheat is also wholesome, wheat is also uh, low in glycemic index, barley also low in glycemic index, millets in small amount can be added, quinoa is also another form which you can take. And what about whole wheat? Whole wheat is also good for the diabetes. The same thing is that uh, it should be one year old. Yeah. Right. Can't, then, then maybe incorporate only once or twice a week rather than doing as a daily uh, diet. Yeah. So you got to keep on having variety and changing the grains, the whole grains. Yes. Someday you can and take canola, are... barley, someday you can take rice, someday you can take whole wheat, millet, you know. Exactly. And there is another thing also. There are some unwholesome diet for diabetes, which I would like to point it out. Like uh, root vegetables are uh, not recommended because it has a very high glycemic index and hard to digest also. Then the sugar cane, preparation from the sugar cane, like the sugar, uh, the white sugar also, a lot of oils, even the jaggery, um, the sour beverages, alcohol, carbohydrates, rich food, yogurt, uh, daytime sleep also. So these are some own uh, unwholesome diet as well as the lifestyle which one should not have, including the sedentary habits, sleeping in daytime, and uh, withholding the urges also is not good for the when it comes to the diabetes. What about fruits like bananas and mangoes? There are sweet fruits. Um, so are there they are okay in moderation. Fruits, yes, there are certain fruits which are recommended in diabetes, like pomegranate is good, papaya is good, as per Ayurveda, and a banana is not recommended for the diabetes. And uh, also, um, the apple also can be taken. Grapes are also uh, not so good. Uh, guava, lemon, lime. Uh, oranges, papaya, pineapple, raspberry, blueberries, strawberries. Those are the fruits which one can incorporate. Mangoes, uh, it's summertime. Mangoes because... in small quantity during the summer can be taken, but not in a larger quantity because it also contains a lot of sugar. So we're talking about half a mango? Uh, maybe one slice of mango. Okay, so quarter yes. mango, yeah. Yes. Uh, that can be taken in the summertime. True. Let's talk about, uh, you know, Hasta Yoga Mudras or the hand yoga, and they are very powerful as well if they're done the right way and they're done consistently. Uh, they do have beneficial results. So mudras and uh, mudra is actually a Sanskrit word. Uh, so mudra means the hand gestures, which are connecting to your subtle level as well as to your digestion. So uh, in the science of the yogic uh, part, if we say that there are various mudras which can correct the metabolism and can helpful for the diabetes situation. So one is the linga mudra, then there is a gyan mudra, surya mudra. All these mudras are beneficial for that. I can show can one show that to us. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So you cross your hands like this and then the left thumb. Uh, here, the important thing is the left thumb should be straight. And then you wrap your index finger and the other thumb around that and hold it like this and focus on the breathing. And this mudra can be done from five to 10 minutes on regular basis, two to three times a day. 
this mudra is related to your pitta this mudra is related to the energy of the sun so uh when we talk about the energy of the sun i'll show you this one yeah so the left thumb straight and rest of the hand is uh and the index and the right thumb is surrounding by this so when it comes to this mudra as i said it is related to the pitta so that means it works on the digestive fire so mm -hmm. it corrects the metabolism through the digestive fire similarly the surya mudra also helps in correcting the digestion so in that way indirectly it works on your metabolism helps with the proper uh digestion and that's how it helps in uh, uh the, the diabetes situation this is to be done three times 10 minutes each sitting two to three times uh one can do that uh there is no hard and fast rule the only thing is it should not be done uh fully stomach mm -hmm. so that means early morning or towards the late evening any pose even if you are lying down sitting standing it can be done the main focus should be along with the mudra focus should be on your internal breathing how you breathe that impacts the effect of that mudra okay and any other mudra that you recommend um there is a apan mudra gyan mudra then pran mudra surya mudra all these mudras the five mudras which i have picked which are very very best when it comes to the uh correcting the metabolic the gyan mudra would be like this right uh, yes index yes. and your thumb finger yeah yes yes or are we just touching the fingers or mm -hmm. are we pressing on them so you can gently press it should, it should not press. be not not any pressure like surya mudra you keep this finger straight this uh this one you fold and put your thumb like this right. so all these three without stressing your hand it should be straight yeah and this thumb should be pressed here right so in that way this is known as surya mudra again it works on the pitta level because this is surya means the agni the jatra agni right so that that helps with the digestion and the metabolism right right and uh, the other three fingers should be straight yes the other three fingers should be straight and uh, since it is working on the metabolism it helps with the weight loss also mm -hmm. Uh, by correcting the digestion i okay. can yes 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 so th these also play a big role but then it's all together everything with your diet with your proper sleep you know mudras your yoga and at the same time uh discipline as to when you're eating your foods at the right time because ayurveda talks about that being in balance with yourself and balance with nature so eating on time eating the right food on time and sleeping on time it's not like okay i'm going to sleep 8 hours and i'm going to sleep from 12 midnight to 8 am that's not the way it should you sleep should be from 10 pm to 5 am so those those are important things to consider when we're looking at the ayurveda perspective yes we always says that the excessive sleep is one of the main cause of the um diabetes as well as excessive sleep is the first sign of the pre sign of the diabetes in ayurveda there is a uh, pre signs mentioned in the diabetes for the ayurveda so one of the sign is the, if the person starts feeling excessive sleepiness and uh, lethargy that means uh, uh, he needs to correct his metabolism the ama formed is there so once we correct the sleep pattern by moving more you move more do the physical activity more right then we can correct the metabolism so sleep is an integral part of uh, your overall health so lesser sleep is also not good but more sleep is also not good that's right so ideal time like you said 10 pm before 10 pm is the sleep time and uh, morning time we always says that before 96 minutes before the sunrise because that is called as a brahma muhurta right means that is the time where the uh where you can cultivate more prana means a positive energy in the physical state as well as in the mind and that helps with the stressful situations also so try to experience uh waking up early i know it is very hard to break those old habits <laughs> but once we try that it is always good to feel fresh the freshness you will feel after waking up and going experiencing the nature that that uh, there is no comparison for that when you do the workout on the treadmill or in a controlled environment in the gym and all yeah that is true and uh, when we're talking about supplements what are they 
uh, for uh, diabetics. Uh, the supplements, one is the Trifla. Indian gooseberry It's all over the counter. There's, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And Trifla is a combination of three uh, fruits in the dried form. And that also one of the best, we say that Trifla is a versatile Ayurvedic supplement, which can be helpful in from the rejuvenating uh, towards the, your eye health, your skin health, your hair health, uh, anti anti aging, rejuvenating, and helps with the diabetes also. And another one is uh, the turmeric, which is can be combined with the uh, Indian gooseberry amla. Uh, Nisha amalki, we say that Nisha means turmeric, amalki means Indian gooseberry combined together. That is another supplement. And then the third one, the shilajit, is also one of the supplement which is over the counter, which can be uh, taken. Uh, all these three can be helpful and beneficial uh, standalone as well as in combination. And, you know, now we are also talking about type 3 diabetes, which is Alzheimer's, because the insulin deficiency can create havoc in the brain and can cause a lot of memory loss and early intervention. You know, this is the most important point. So we know that your blood sugar level is going up every time you're going to your primary physician then it's important that you start taking control with lifestyle management. That is so, so true because uh, diabetes is directly linked to the, your heart health, your kidney health, your brain health, and uh, even the skin health. Yeah. Diabetic ulcers are also, if there is uncontrolled diabetes, then it can lead to the skin ulcers also, non-healing skin ulcers. So all these four organs needs to be protected and that can be done with a good diet, lifestyle, and uh, as well as proper sleep and the exercise. That's right. Well, any uh, more advice? Because you, um, you know, your classic example, your family has diabetes, but you're able to prevent it. Yes, I do. Uh, so far, um, I would say that I'm, I'm away from the even the pre-diabetic situation right now. Um, the one thing which works for me is the fasting, because not, neither, fasting. I am, neither I am overweight, but neither I am a lean and thin also. So I'm in between the category where the BMI is really good, but I want to keep it that way. So I do the intermittent fasting, which is helping me, uh, and I watch what I eat. Uh, intermittent fasting can be done in a various ways, Dr. Yeah. Renai. We can do uh, how I do. I do keep fast to twice a day, uh, sorry, twice a week. So two days in a week, I don't eat any solid food. I rely on water as well as uh, one small cup of freshly squeezed juice, that's it. And uh, also can be done in the way 14, 18 hours, 14 to 8 hours, where the 8 hour is a window where you can eat two meals and one snack, and uh, 14 hours is a fasting time. But it can be variable from person to person. Few people cannot tolerate the hunger. But if I see in my wellness center, we are more successful for this, this protocol because it is easier to manage. When I tell, uh, okay, let's try to do the intermittent fasting where you finish your dinner before seven and you don't eat till next day, uh, till the 11.30 or 12 mark. And uh, then between 12 to seven, you consume two main meals. And in between you do the healthy snacks in the form of healthy nuts, Almond has low glycemic index, right? So in, the, in that form, the figs also, the other healthy snacks can be consumed. So that way also, it is very, very helpful, especially when it comes to the pre-diabetic situation, uh, as well as in the chronic diabetes also. Uh, but might not be suitable for the person who is already very weak and cannot sustain the hunger because we don't want to drop the sugar levels also very low to the dangerous levels. Yeah. So that that people, those people where the sugar is already fluctuating. So we put like a two days of uh, uh, two days a, a week of uh, fasting, or we day uh, we say that uh, consume small meals but do the low glycemic index food and watch your diet. Yeah. 
Again, it comes back to lifestyle management and being in balance with nature and ourselves. Thank you so much, Veda Menakshi Gupta, founder director of Ayurroots, which is the Ayurveda Wellness Center in Plano, Texas. I'm Dr. Neymera. Stay healthy, stay positive.